How's it going guys? So today we're going to be editing a photo. We're going to be processing this shot here. Super high dynamic range scenes shooting directly into the sun coming from three bracketed images and we're going to be doing it inside of Lightroom only. So those of you that know me know that I'm a Photoshop guy. I only edit my landscape photography inside of Photoshop and it's just because it's way more powerful. I have tools like luminosity masks and layer masks and free transform and all of the beautiful things that Photoshop has. But I know that there's a lot of Lightroom only users. This video is for you. I wanted to show you how I would approach a scene in a very local rather than global way inside of Lightroom. So. Let's jump into it. Also, if you're a new subscriber, welcome. I have lots more tutorials coming, including a massive back catalog of vlogs and gear reviews and tutorials. So let's jump into this shot. So as you guys can see, this is a really high dynamic range scene. This was my base exposure where I'm still blowing highlights. My shadows are all blocked up. My darkest exposure, I'm trying to get as much information around the sun as I can. My brightest exposure, I almost got shadow information. We're going to have to use all three of these in order to get the full dynamic range of this scene so we have both shadow information and highlight information around that sun area. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to merge these into a HDR file. Lightroom makes it really easy to do that. We're just going to hold down shift, select all three of these images. We're going to right click and then go photo merge HDR or you can just hit control or command H. It's going to bring up this preview. I always leave the deghosting amount to none. If you have deghosting turned on, sometimes that can actually create some artifacts where you'll get little patches where it's used one of the brighter or one of the darker exposures for some of your shadow information and you end up with little noisy patches. So unless you have a lot of movement in your scene, which we did not hear, always leave this at none. I was on a sturdy tripod. So I'm going to leave auto align off and auto settings. All that's going to do is kind of pre-process the shot. I also leave that deselected. So basically I'm just going to hit merge. Now what that's going to do is it's going to take the, the combined dynamic range of all three of those brackets and squish them into a single DNG file. That DNG file is still going to be a raw file. We're still going to have all of the information that we have from a raw file, like white balance and lens corrections, all of that stuff. But we're going to have the full dynamic range of all three of those shots available to us. Okay, so this is the file that it gives us. You can see that it's a .dng. And now if I just play around with the exposure slider, you see I've got all that highlight information around the sun. If I brighten it up, we should have some nice noise free shadow information down in these blocked up shadow areas. So this is going to be the file that we're going to be working from. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people use, especially when they're editing inside of Lightroom is that they're trying to do too many global adjustments. What I mean by global adjustments are things that affect the entire photo globally. A local adjustment, on the other hand, is something like an adjustment brush, a graduated filter, a radial filter, something where you're targeting only a part of the photo for that particular edit that you're trying to do. If you're trying to do everything globally, a lot of times you create a lot of artifacts and just stuff that you don't want. You you create what I call innocent bystander pixels, meaning pixels that were just over hanging out, minding their own business, and now all of a sudden they've been affected even when you weren't wanting to affect those pixels. So for example, if we were trying to just use the basic slider, one of the most common things, especially you'll see on YouTube, I'm not going to name any names, but people love to recommend to take the shadows all the way up and the highlights all the way down and then play with your exposure. And you get something that looks like this where it's just killed the contrast for one, but it's just created way more artifacts. You have a lot of what I call innocent bystander pixels. Rather than doing that, what we want to do is we want to start thinking globally. So if I was to look at this shot as a whole right now, obviously we need to even out the tonality between the sky and the shadow and in the shadow areas of the photo. Um, I want to draw the eye through the shot. I don't want a shot where the eye just wanders all over the place because there's information everywhere. So I want to do as much of that kind of tonality adjustment stuff with local adjustments like graduated filters and adjustment brushes. So let's start off by trying to find a happy balance with our exposure 
where we're starting to get some shadow information, at least in the middle of the shot, something like this. Maybe let's open the shadows a little bit, recover the highlights just the tiniest bit. And now let's try to even out the tonality of the shot with some graduated filters where we're targeting just a part of our photo. So for example, let's grab a graduated filter. I'm going to double click the word effect. And now I'm gonna recover some highlights and bring down the exposure, knowing that I'm going to use this in the sky to try to darken that sky and make it kind of blend better with the rest of the shot. So I'm gonna click and drag down, and you'll notice that we're getting far less of that strange flat effect throughout our photo by just trying to affect the sky. This transition area, however, is going to be what we have to finesse. As I grab this graduated filter and either condense it down or stretch it out, it changes how fast that effect feathers out and, and transitions from zero effect to 100% effect. This is where the finessing is gonna have to happen, is in this transition area. The key to making adjustments like this work is to do very minute, small adjustments and try to build up the effect. Rather than trying to get it all done in one, in one graduated filter, do several and try to just finesse them and make them a little bit more subtle. So just in this one, we're starting to get a much more even tonality, but let's try to brighten the bottom half of the photo now. Let's grab another graduated filter, double click the word effect to reset our sliders here. And now in this one, let's just open some shadows and boost a little bit of exposure. And we're gonna drag this up from the bottom. That's more effect than I want it to have. So let's, let's try playing around with the values here. Let's be subtle. Something like this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Thinking about the end result, I want the area kind of in the center of the photo, you know, a little bit deeper into the photo to have brighter shadow information than down here in the corners. I don't want the eye to escape out the bottom portion of the photo. So I'm gonna do another graduated filter. I'm gonna click the word new, double click the word effect, and now I'm just going to do a slight bit of darkening. So I'm bringing down the exposure and just dragging this up from the bottom. And you see that's going to darken the shadow information down here. That way it subtly gets brighter as we get deeper into the photo. That's gonna drag the viewer's eye deeper into the shot and that's always a good thing. So now we're starting to get a shot where we have much more even tonality. It's still probably airing on the side of too dark. So let's just go back to our basic panel here boost the exposure a little bit, click on the word exposure, hit the plus minus keys. That's looking a little better. Now the top portion of the sky, I feel like could use a little bit more drama and we could kind of add a little bit of a graduation from dark to bright to kind of bring the eye down into the shot. So I'm gonna create another graduated filter, bring down the exposure slider, add a little contrast, slide this down from the top, I'm making it big and feathered and then I'm just gonna drag it up so it's very slow and subtle. Now if we do a before and after of where we started and where we are now, it kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing here and you can kind of analyze if you like what you've done so far. And I feel like, you know, there are some artifacts that are being created. I don't like how dark the hilltop is over here or over here. Um, also, our lake is getting a little bit over bright, so those are things that we need to think about. But tonality-wise, it's getting a lot more even. So let's try to bring down the highlights in this lake area here, and let's try to do it in a local way. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush this time. Gonna reset it. Let's recover highlights, and then just paint this over our lake area here. It's going to target the highlights, that way it's not going to affect the areas that I'm accidentally spilling over into those shadow areas. Once I paint that on, we can kind of play with the effect. Looks like we have some blown highlights there, unfortunately, which means that we can't over darken that or else it's going to look very unnatural. Now that we've kind of evened out the tonality a bit, I want to start playing around with my white balance, try to get our white balance, get our colors in the realm of where I feel good about them. I feel like our yellows are a bit too yellow. So we're gonna play around with that. Let's go down into our HSL panel and I'm going to shift the yellow tones with the hue slider 
over to the left, which is going to push them a little bit closer to orange. That way it's a it's a little bit yes, less of that kind of greenish yellow and more of like a peachy orange. I don't want to go too far with this. It's really easy to overdo stuff like that. So somewhere in there is looking okay to me. So now the next thing I want to do is I, I'm not loving how stuff is looking around the sun. You see how we weren't able to recover all of our highlights. We still have some high, blown highlights and areas that just look a little bit weird and unnatural. And I think that we can we can really add a little bit a little bit more of a sense of atmosphere just by kind of making that area glow, making it feel like the light is really emanating from that sun. One of my favorite tricks for doing that is just using the radial filter. Let's go over to our radial filter here. We're going to feather it all the way. Let's make sure that it's on invert. That way it's happening on the inside of the circle. We're going to grab the dehaze slider and move it left because we're going to be adding haze, not, not removing it. We're going to add a little bit of exposure, a little bit of warmth, and then we're going to draw this around the sun area. And you can see it just it just kind of has this it adds this glowy thing <laughs> that's the technical term it adds a glowy thing we can play around with the shape of it i kind of like it more egg shaped like this like all things it's better to be subtle with it and do multiple if you have to so this one let's make kind of a large a large glowy area like this we'll stretch it out to the sides and then we can grab a new one and do it again. So we'll grab this one and we'll have it be a little bit smaller. We're going to bring down the exposure a bit, make this a little bit more subtle. So if I turn that effect off and on, no radial filter, radial filter, no radial filter, radial filter. You can see we're just kind of adding to this sense of the light emanating from that area there. Now the thought process behind having that really strong uh, light source in the center of the photo is it wants to drag the eye into the center of the shot. And I do that with a lot of my shots. Uh, it just, it just makes it, it makes it so the shot is not confusing for the viewer to view. If you have detail and information everywhere, the eye is going to wander. But if you have a very strong pinpoint of light, it really just drags the viewer's eye into the shot. The viewer is always going to be drawn to highlights, contrast, and color. In this shot, most of the color and the highlights are all happening, you know, around our light source. And that, that kind of makes this shot work compositionally. So a couple other things that you have to do in every shot. We've I've talked a lot about evening out the tonality, but we haven't really talked about all the other basic things you want to do in a shot. So so thing number one, we've already done where we tried to tweak our color and get our colors looking the way we want it to look. That was through white balance and the HSL panel. The next thing that you always have to do is you need to tweak your sharpening. So if we go down into the detail tab here, we have our amount, which is obviously the amount of sharpening. We have our radius, which is the size of the grain. I always decrease the radius all the way to the left. That makes it a very small, sharp, fine grain type of sharpening. The next thing is the detail amount. If you slide it all the way to the right, that's called deconvolution. And if you slide it all the way to the left, that's a high pass type sharpening. We like, or at least I like, deconvolution. So I'm going to slide that to the right. The last and most important thing in a lot of landscape photography is the masking slider. If I hold down Alt or Option, by default, when a photo comes into Lightroom, it is sharpening everything that is white right now equally. That means that it's sharpening the noise in the sky, the, you know, every tiny piece of grain, the noise in the shadows is sharpening everything equally. But as I slide, hold down Alt and slide this to the right, it starts to get more and more picky about what it's going to sharpen. And what we want to do is we want to slide this to the right an amount that makes sense for this particular shot. Every shot is different. So in this shot, I want it to be sharpening the foliage, you know, the details in the mountains, but not necessarily the sky, probably not the sensor dust. So somewhere in here, I think makes sense for this particular shot. And because we're editing this only in Lightroom and we're not going to be editing this in Photoshop, I'm going to increase the amount a bit. I'm going to bring it up to 60 ish. Uh, this is your only chance for sharpening you really get inside of Lightroom. Uh, so you got to hit it kind of hard. 
The next thing is you go down to lens corrections. We're gonna remove chromatic aberrations. I do that in every single photo. And then we have enable profile correction. The only time I ever really do that is A, if the vignetting bothers me, or B, if we have a flat horizon line that is obviously getting bowed due to the barrel or pin cushion distortion of the lens. This does not have an obvious horizon line, so we're okay. And that's about it. Uh, sometimes if I have a shot that benefits from a little bit more saturation, this one has plenty. But if we did have a shot like that, I would go down to the calibration tab and I would increase the saturation of the blue primary or maybe the red primary. This shot has plenty of saturation. In fact, I am tempted to back it off a couple clicks. So the last and final thing is the cleanup. I'm gonna get rid of our sensor dust. I grabbed our spot removal tool. This is one of those times when Photoshop is vastly better, but we can use the spot removal tool to go in and get rid of whatever sensor dust we can find. And I'm using not only the spot removal tool, but we're using the visualize spots. If you look down on your toolbar here, you've got your visualized spots. You can slide the slider around to help you find whatever sensor dust you might have. It just helps you visualize your spots. Also, I'm gonna crop in on this a little bit because if you look over on this corner here, we've got just a couple of highlights happening from some of the close vegetation. And I always try to do edge patrol and not have any of that stuff peeking into my frame. So I'm going to go over to the crop tool and I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit on that side. Maybe bring it down the tiniest bit. Hit enter when I'm done. Hit F for full screen. And this is what our shot looks like. Now, if I was editing inside of Photoshop, there's a whole bunch more that I could do. I would have better control over the dynamic range and, you know, deal, evening out that tonality. Also, we have a lens flare down there that's bothering me right now. <laughs> I would get rid of that, but I know that Lightroom is not going to do a great job of that. So this is how I would edit a photo inside of Lightroom but I still encourage everybody to go out and learn Photoshop because it's far more powerful. You got way more powerful tools to work with and you're gonna be able to realize your vision a lot better once you master Photoshop. But if you are the person that is editing only in Lightroom, here's how I would approach this particular shot. So guys, I hope this has been useful. We're gonna be doing a lot more of these tutorials. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And if you are a subscriber, uh, check out the playlist. I'm gonna be adding a whole bunch more tutorials um, in the next couple weeks. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.